There's almost nobody who hasn't been touched by cancer in their lives. If we can diagnose uh, diseases early, before they go out of control, there is always a hope that we can save lives. 85% of all women today diagnosed with breast cancer are going to live a good, long, cancer-free life because of research. By helping animals today, we can help uh, future human patients. We are talking about taking laboratory discoveries all the way from test tubes into humans. The translational process is considered benchtop to bedside. and Basically, we're taking things from the laboratory into patients. Here at MU, we have the ability to take things from the laboratory through our veterinary hospital and companion animals all the way into the human hospital, resulting in FDA-approved imaging and therapy agents. The University of Missouri is uniquely positioned in that we're one of the few schools where every step of this process can be done on one campus. Generally, the first step starts in the lab. We decorate gold nanoparticles with certain chemicals. Okay, that's one of my uh, inventions here, that uh, we use uh, green nanotechnology processes, uh, which means we use uh, simple chemicals that are there in, in soybean or in tea. We have discovered that these chemicals have very powerful affinity to cancerous cells. That gives the aim to these nanoparticles to go and localize on the tumor site. Gold nanoparticle itself can be made to be inherently therapeutic. We do it by converting simple gold nanoparticles into radioactive nanoparticles. Once they're inside the cell, they will look around and they, they, they look at these cancer cells as real enemies and they will decimate them. We studied those anti-tumor, anti-cancer properties in, uh, in small animals like mice uh, and then we investigated uh, how these chemical compounds of gold would uh, shrink or cure certain types of cancers in dogs. So specifically we're looking at prostate cancer and dogs develop a very aggressive and metastatic form of cancer, prostate cancer, that people can also develop. The gum arabic radioactive gold nanoparticles gives us the chance to not only treat dogs better and hopefully improve their quality of life for a period of time, but it'll give us the chance to predict how well this particular treatment is going to work in addition to any particular toxicities that we can expect prior to treatment in men. So the gold nanoparticle research is an excellent example of the collaboration here available at MU and the ability to use all of our resources to better fight cancer. Because of the incredible resources of imaging capabilities, therapy capabilities, and the faculty here at MU, we were invited to become members of the Comparative Oncology Trials Consortium of the NIH. It's a consortium of uh, leading vet schools across the United States. We're involved in clinical trials that uh, include pet animals who have naturally developed cancer. And the consortium's goal is to provide new therapies to these pet animals, and in so doing, evaluate novel therapeutics that have an intent to improve outcomes for human patients. So uh, this field of research is referred to as comparative oncology. Missouri First has uh, some of the critical key opinion leaders in the field, so having their opinions represented in the protocols that are conducted, having their voice heard as concepts are considered is really quite invaluable. Missouri also has a unique and, and really quite a distinctive strength in nuclear medicine, which I think allows them to be well positioned to embark on a set of questions that wouldn't really be possible anywhere else. So the University of Missouri is unique in that it's one of the only schools with a collaborative environment such as we have with the MU Research Reactor, the Medical School, Ellis Fischel Cancer Center, and the Veterinary Teaching Hospital. It's one of the very few places where all of us work together to try and better fight cancer. We uniquely provide for the nation um, radioactive materials that are either used to diagnose cancer, treat cancer, or both. Quadramet is one that's used in the treatment of metastatic bone cancer. It can deal with the pain associated with it, shrinks the tumors that are located on the bone. The other cancer in the body has to be dealt with in some other way, but Quadramet helps in the quality of life. And then that particular isotope we supply every Monday. We're the sole supplier for the entire U.S. So a patient that somewhere in the U.S. is getting a Quadramet treatment, you can rest assured that the active ingredient, in this case, samarium 153, 
came from the MU Research Reactor. Quadramet was developed in concert with private industry and with researchers at the University of Missouri and the Research Reactor. So all the way through bench top to bedside as we like to say, and that drug has made it from the initial concept all the way through to patient care. Besides the imaging and therapy products of the reactor, the reactor can also serve as a vehicle to treat cancer. Dr. Fred Hawthorne, an internationally recognized chemist in boron chemistry to treat cancer, initially tested his compounds years ago in companion dogs with brain tumors. Our comparative abilities here at the University of Missouri, plus the presence of the reactor, brought Dr. Hawthorne to join our family. Dr. Hawthorne has been recognized with just about every scientific award possible. And in December of 2012, President Obama named Dr. Hawthorne as a recipient of the National Medal of Science, America's highest honor for a scientist. What I've done is to investigate compounds I knew about that I had synthesized and invented, if you will, at UCLA and had no way to test them and they work beautifully. So we have now probably the, the finest reagents or neutron agents to combat tumors in man or animals. Just having the reactor alone would not serve the purpose. Uh, we need a testing place. We have a comparative oncology unit, one of the finest in the world, in the vet school. Just having the vet school alone will not take us to the next level. Everything that we do, we do in the perspective of treating human patients. So that's where the med school comes into uh, the picture. And all of this, for, for doing all of this, there's a strong undercurrent. That is the basic science. Dr. John Viator was doing some special work on photoacoustics, detecting the differences between bacteria by shining a laser at them and how they absorb that laser light could tell him what kind of bacteria it was. I said, John, that is fantastic. Let's do that with cancer cells. And through that uh, collaborative effort, um, we have actually got a patent on and are able to identify circulating tumor cells in the blood. We can identify one cell in about 10 cc's of blood. And that in and of itself is quite remarkable. Our successes in companion animal cancer therapy trials will lead to innovations that could be more rapidly tested in humans. And having a clinical trial center for humans at Ellis Fischel Cancer Center will allow us to move this directly into the human care field. There are a lot of experimental treatments uh, that are particularly important for our cancer patients that could be available in other um, centers now they are available at MU, in which our patients, we provide them not only with an excellent care, but also with the state-of-the-art capabilities to bring investigational drugs where traditional drugs have failed. Because we have all the components on one campus, we're unrivaled in our ability to efficiently translate scientific discovery into the best patient care possible today, while training the researchers and clinicians of tomorrow. By having the nation's largest reactor at any university, we're able to attract some of the best and brightest students in this country to come to the University of Missouri and study. We have over 100 vet students now per year coming through the clinic, and the ability to teach them and also see them grow and learn and develop into veterinarians is very rewarding. And some of those undergrads, uh, they come here uh, you know, knowing very little about nanotechnology and they get, they get excited as they start doing it. And then they think that they can actually one day be able to apply their knowledge for saving human lives. I came here in 2002 to start residency training in oncology. And through my graduate work in radiopharmaceutical development as well as in epigenetics, I really learned that cancer research and particularly translational cancer research is my passion. We have the ability to take our research from the lab into rodent models, into our pet dog populations, and into people at a speed at which is not applicable in a lot of other places because the collaborative environment here is so unique. Saving the lives of human patients is our common object. We may not speak the same language because we work in different areas of research, but we have a common goal to achieve. That brings us together. We're living in a world where patients are alive today and we expect even more in the future because of what happens at the research reactor, that gets pretty exciting. I came back to Mizzou to be a faculty member here because of all of the resources on campus. 
And having a cancer center like Ellis Fischel that not only is applying the latest therapies, but is helping advance that field right here in mid-Missouri is inspiring to me and it's inspiring to many of the graduate students and undergraduates that we teach here at Mizzou. We have a, a tremendous future uh, that we can save millions and millions of human lives.